Okay, now we have a basic color solution for our logo, for our black shape logo. We're doing it with layer styles in Photopea. You can see I have some texture on there. I have a glow on there. I have a little bit of embossing and I have a gradient and a color. Now I made a duplicate of that and then I made a new blank layer on top of it that I call color fills. This is a rasterized layer. This is the beauty of it. I am going to use my magic wand selection. We haven't used it in a while. I'm going to set it to be contiguous, anti-alias with a low tolerance, a tolerance of, you know, pretty low. And what I'm going to do is use this magic wand on my vector layer to select the empty space within the closed paths, right? It's another reason for closed paths. So I use my magic wand and I select. Even though it's a vector, it will select very nicely. You can kind of see it. The empty space in the tongue. And it will select it up to the vector. It's not going to care that there's an offset already built into it. Then I move that selection onto my color fills blank layer, right? And then I can use either my gradient tool if I want to paint it with a gradient or I use the paint bucket tool, which is right underneath. Or I can just say edit fill and it will fill the selection. But I pick a foreground color. Let's just pick a red for the tongue. All right? And then I can just, with the paint bucket tool, click on that selection. And there you have it. It's filled. This is called digital coloring. It's basically coloring within your shapes, like stained glass. So if I take that color and I move it behind my offset, then you'll see the offset on top of the coloring. But if I move that fill color on top of my logo with the offsets, then it will fill in on top of it. So I can color the whole thing this way. If I take the head and I use magic wand and I select all of these shapes in that closed path, then I go to my color fills and I use my paint bucket and I'll choose kind of a brownish gray like my Heather, my dog. And then just click to fill it in. These are raster color layers, but they fill inside the vector. Right. Then I have that as a color fill. Then I go back to my vector layers. And I select the jaw. I can always hold down shift and select multiple of these too. I have the same color. Use the paint bucket, color it in. If I want the eyes and the teeth to always be white, I go back to my vector layer, or maybe I'll do like a yellowish off-white, a little ghostly. And I hold down shift, I can select all of these fill paths at once. And then with the magic wand, not the magic wand, I'm sorry, the paint bucket tool, we pick kind of a, a creamy off-white. then I can fill them all in on the color fills layer. Now that's what's called flat color. It's pretty boring, very computer generated, just flat color. But at any time, I could fill it instead with a gradation, right? So the beauty of doing flat color, it's called flatting, is that I can now take my, well, let me make a duplicate of it so I can show you the two versions. 
So that's just flat color. Now I can take the whole thing and I can select each individual color. If I turn off contiguous with my magic wand and it will select all of the browns you know, together. And then I can replace that with maybe a gradient tool or work over the top of it with a gradient. Maybe something like this at a low opacity like we were doing with the um the sky we made behind our cloud creatures so i saw in the chat that the mic has died i'll switch to an external mic see if that helps yeah just let me know so i paint that gradient and it mixes And I can give it a little bit more variation. And just like we did with the sky, you can paint with multiple gradients at different opacities on different layers, if you like. And of course, you can also just do layer styles to your colors as well. So I kind of like that for the gray of Heather. But now I need the tongue to be brighter. So I might go on top of that and just erase out all the browns from that stained glass, right? And then play with some of these other features. Give a little bit of gradient to the tongue. And I can even just select all of the the off-whites, copy them onto their own layer. Right? You can always separate out these color fills just on their own. And then I can use layer styles as well. And you can take the time to customize all of these. I mean, there's just so much you can do. It's ridiculous. And it's all just based on the strength of your vector shapes. There we go. That's getting closer to what I was thinking. You can see all of them combined. It's kind of nice. put the outlines underneath them, or you can put your outlines on top, right? So maybe everything glows, just depending on your layer order. Except the tongue. I think I like that kind of subtlety to it. So then we see how that looks on the different backgrounds. How does that look on black? Looks good. How does it look on gray? Yep, that works. How does it look on white? So is that color solution versatile? Yes. Engaging? Yes. Maybe even more than just the black shapes. So then we save that. This is. I'll save it first as a PSD because now this has all those different options in there. I can get back to all those different logo solutions just from the same vector shapes. And of course I can keep working on it.
but we'll get it more into digital coloring with our next assignment. And then I save it or export it as a PNG with the backgrounds turned off in order to post. So that's fully how you can color your vector without ever rasterizing it. So it's always a clean vector file. And without having to build vector shapes into it, because that gets a little annoying. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and post those. So I find where my computer downloaded them. And this will be it. We'll do our presentations next. And I save them to my folder. And that's color solution number one, which is kind of interesting. But then this will be obviously a little bit more clear as a color solution. Color solution number two. And amazingly, the fill is the exact same. It's just the difference of having, or the color overlay is the exact same, but having a fill really makes that overlay appear differently. The context of color, right? And then if I post it to Canvas, maybe you guys can let me know if my mic has returned. And I will add it in here. And we're getting better and better at posting into the canvas in a way that we can all see it, in a way that it fits. But then we also want to be able to post into Imgur our favorite portfolio projects. Right. So that is our process. So let's shrink it on to fit. And this is very much what graphic designers do a lot of. You show the initial design, but then you show all the variations because you want a logo to be able to go onto a dark background. You want it to be able to be printed in color. You want it to be able to be printed cheaply in just black and white. So on and so forth. And then I guess the very last thing I can show you is if you wanted to individually vary the different colors, right? So for instance, just like I took the vector shapes and colored behind them, what I can do is I can use the magic wand not to select the, sh the space in between the vector shapes, but I can use it to actually select the vector shapes themselves. So if I do contiguous again, I can select the pupils of the eyes and hold down shift, and then I can duplicate those onto a new layer. And they'll keep all the effects, but it will apply them just to the eyes, right? And then I could play with those colors differently. So for color, I can change it from being the blue to being a red. Now, the only downside of this is it does rasterize them. But they'll look perfect in this you know situation it isn't until they they become oh what's the term it isn't until they become uh resized that those eyes would start to soften whereas the rest of the vector would stay sharp but you can also you know steal images from your vector and then replace the color of just those shapes. So there's always a solution for how you might want to